meet Louie. He's a rescue dog that's about a year and a half old. Louie is very friendly and very adorable, but he had a long list of undesirable behaviors that needed addressing. He's leash reactive to other dogs, most men, and almost anything that moves, including birds, bunnies, and squirrels. When I met Louie, he struggled intensely on walks. Even in unstimulating environments, Louie would go over a threshold almost immediately. He wouldn't care about treats, he didn't respond to his name, and he pulled almost 100% of the time. He was also one of the worst jumpers that I'd met, and I got a few bruises just trying to put his leash on. This video and my next few are going to feature Louie and my sessions with him, where we worked on all of that without a single correction. I'm so excited to show you his progress. In this video, I'm going to share 10 quick tips that I personally use to immediately improve walks with a dog that pulls on leash. <laughs> Tip one is get a longer leash. When we first meet, a lot of my reactivity or leash pulling clients are often using a really short leash, typically about three to four feet. I understand the logic behind it where people assume if the dog is closer to you, you have more control. However, the problem with that is that dogs want to sniff and explore on walks. As humans, we look around at the views, but dogs' main sense is smell. For them, sniffing is a big part of what makes walks enjoyable. If you're using a really short leash, the only way for a dog to sniff is if they pull you. So then they're self-rewarding for the very behavior that you're trying to fix. And the best thing that happened to them on that walk, i.e. the sniff, occurred while they pulled. Dogs repeat what works. Which behavior do you think your dog was encouraged to try again next time? Pulling. For reactive dogs like Louie, this is extra undesirable because leash tension is going to increase their level of reactivity. I strongly encourage you to try a longer leash. For clients that are hesitant, a good bridge that I suggest starting with is a six foot leash. That way, the dog can move off the path and sniff without any leash tension, but they're still close enough to you that you feel like you can manage any situation that might arise. Tip two is bring two different kinds of treats on walks. I like bringing two different kinds of treats on walks. First, a regular treat like beef liver, and second, something incredibly high value, such as ground beef, chicken, or pork. I start walks by using the extra high value item to capture that dog's attention when we first go outside, and then I save it for really difficult moments that might arise during the walk. The rest of the time, I use regular dog treats as the reward, that way the other item stays special. I find that using this two reward system makes a massive difference. Tip three is utilize some version of the up and down game. If you have a dog like Louie that tends to get overstimulated as soon as he's outside, I really like dropping a treat onto the ground for them to sniff out, then marking and rewarding them for any version of reorientating back to you. Repeat this a couple times at the beginning of the walk to get your dog more relaxed and to help them focus on you. I use the same game later in walks if I notice the dog is getting overstimulated or I modify it slightly by moving away to help train the dog to follow me after they found something of interest. Tip four is start in as low of distraction setting as you can. If there's a quiet field or trail near you where you can practice their leash skills, I suggest starting there. However, if you live in a city like me, that's not always easily accessible. Instead, when I'm just starting leash training, I try to walk at less busy times of the day and choose less busy paths. Once your dog is more solid on their skills, then you can increase the difficulty. Tip five is to practice name recognition and getting your dog's attention. Lou? If you only ever use your dog's name to try to grab their attention when there is a trigger present, your dog is likely gonna figure out that pattern. What you'll notice is they'll start to scan the environment to see what you see rather than focusing on you when they hear their name. Instead, I encourage you to practice lots of repetitions where you say your dog's name when there's nothing around and then reward them for focusing on you or for coming back. We want that behavior to be so rehearsed and so fast that it works great when there are distractions that our dog Oops. might go after. Yes. You don't want to start training a skill when you already need it. I want to take a quick training break to have you guess which breed Louie and his brother Diesel are. His guardian was told that they're a Husky Border Collie cross, but I'm not convinced. I'd love to hear in the comments what breeds you think they are. 
I'm always curious about who's watching my videos, so I'd love to hear in the comments what your dog's name is, what breed they are, and any other details that you would like to share. Tip six is when your dog pulls to a smell, stand still to prevent that from working. As we talked about earlier, sniffing is highly rewarding for dogs. Therefore, if they drag you to a smell, they've actually self-rewarded for that behavior. Instead, what I suggest you do if your dog starts pulling is to stand firm and prevent that from working. Then encourage your dog back to you and reward them for doing so. Good. Afterwards, say okay or some other release cue and walk them back to the smell that they were originally interested in. We want to encourage our dogs to sniff and enjoy the walk while still training them that leash tension doesn't work. I do want to emphasize that I'm not intentionally putting tension on the leash as a training method or pulling him back to me. I'm simply preventing the tension that he's adding from getting him what he wants and then I'm rewarding with both a treat and the smell for doing the behavior that I wanted, which is loose leash walking. Tip seven is reward every voluntary check-in for at least a few weeks. You really want a dog that pays attention and cares where you are in relation to them on the leash if you're working on pulling. Rewarding your dog for every single check-in helps build that. When a dog is just learning, I keep my criteria low by rewarding them for every time that they look at me. By rewarding every single check-in for the first few weeks, you're conditioning your dog to pay attention to you and where you are rather than just paying attention to the environment. Even if you just implement this one tip, I'm confident that you'll notice a massive difference in your walks. Tip eight is to interrupt before they pull. I want to encourage you to really focus on your dog during training because most dogs are gonna have a slight tell before they pull. You might see that their ears hone in on something or their pace quickens. Try to learn your dog's tell and catch those moments when you think that they might pull yes. by calling them back to you before they do. The less that we practice the behavior of pulling, the sooner that you'll get to enjoy fully loose leash walks. Tip nine is to practice a management technique for situations that your dog isn't ready for. Until your dog's leash skills improve, there will be situations that you encounter that your dog simply isn't ready for. If you notice a situation that your dog isn't ready for, but you can't avoid it, it's a good idea to use management technique to prevent them from pulling or reacting. I knew on our way home that Louie'd want to go back to this dead bird and I wanted to avoid that. One of my favorite methods for management I refer to as Kong hand. You're gonna have a bunch of small treats in your hand, give the cue, I say Kong, and then slowly feed them out to your dog as you walk past that situation that they aren't ready for. Management is a great way to avoid practicing the rehearsal of undesirable behaviors while the dog is still learning. And tip 10 is to keep walks short. I want to remind you that it's normal for learning new skills to be difficult for both you and your dog. When a dog is just learning leash skills, I like to keep walks to about 20 minutes. Many dogs will get more and more stimulated the longer you've been out and the treats will become less rewarding since they've had quite a few. There's also going to be a limit to how long you can fully focus on implementing all of these tips and how much patience you have. Try to do more frequent but shorter walks when your dog is just learning, that way you're both more likely to have a good time. All of these tips should help immediately improve leash pulling and make walks with your dog more enjoyable. Next week, I'm gonna show you my full unedited training walk with Louie so they can see everything that we did in a session. I'll show you how I'm implementing these tips to teach him leash skills and also how I handle his reactivity when we encounter both construction workers and a man walking his dog. I will link all of Louie's videos in the caption as they're ready. If you prefer step-by-step -step tutorials, I also previously made this video where I taught Charlotte to both heal and loose leash walk on cue. Happy training! See you next week!